How's everyone? <laughs> You're good. Hi, Laura. Hi, Karen. Hi, Ali. <laughs> Hi, Anne Paul. Hello. Hello. Hi, Joy. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Lindsay. Nikki. Catherine. Hello, Debs. Chantal. Oh, it's so lovely to see everybody. Just let me, I'm um, just going to turn that off in a moment. So how are we? Is everybody navigating well? <laughs> We've just been been away for a week, which has been really super to be in the sun. But then when you get home, it's like, oh, <laughs> a week in the, in the dark dismalness of North Yorkshire. <laughs> So I hope you're all doing really well. So we're going to have um, a session last week, this week, actually. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Esme. Uh, we're going to have a little session this week, this uh, month, uh, around congruence, because this is what was coming up um, for me just over, hi, um, the last few days really I've been I don't know how many of you have um read or you probably all will have done or listened to Eat Pray Love has everybody read the book or uh yeah listened to it so um yeah so we're going to go into a little session that is has been kind of inspired by that really and uh, hi Rhiannon and, and um hi Sarah so, <laughs> I haven't seen you forever how lovely. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody. Um, so, yes, we're going to go through a little session of that. I, I've been doing a lovely grounding practice, which I, you've probably seen because I've been doing a few little videos of it um, just lately because it's been so great. I've just found it so good for my energy. So I thought I'll share that with you tonight. We're going to also go through a little energy tune up, which is I've also done a video for that today. Hi, Penny. <laughs> and um so I'll, I'll share that as well and um we're going to do a little bit of journaling so how how many uh, of you have got cacao with you tonight uh working with cacao tonight I'm going to do a little blessing so um it you know we'll we'll just do a little uh blessing with that and then you can you can just set a little intention for yourself but I thought we'd do um a little bit of kind of personal development because I think that because we change like we're changing all the time like every week every you know if you're on this journey of personal development it's something's going to be changing all the time and um I had a those of you that have been working with me for for the last year or so I had a little awareness around Viking energy I got really into Vikings watching um watching all the different Viking things and it really hi Bridget and it really resonated with me that actually you know I live in York I'm really really attracted to this Viking energy and uh, it just really helped me get into co more congruence with who who I am uh, personally so there's been a few different ways um that I've I've kind of come back to that and and keep coming back to it more and more so I'm guessing that if you are here in this circle you are resonating with some kind of wild woman energy <laughs> I'm guessing that you will be so um so we're going to go into that a little bit deeper tonight um so that we can start coming into more and more congruence with actually who we are so if you've been in through any sort of changes or um you know life challenges or anything like that we kind of get chucked out the other end of it, somebody new, somebody different, or we're also trying to find our way back to who we used to be as well. So this is all going to um, bring us maybe just one little step further towards kind of finding that essence, this soul essence that is within us. So I'm going to also take you through this energy tuner, which is a clearing practice for your energy field. So when we're working with new energy or we're bringing in new energy, we need to keep clearing the old stuff because as we're bringing in new stuff, I would be stepping into greater versions of ourselves. Um, the old stuff tends to kind of jump up on our shoulder, like the ego self, like push up on the shoulder, going, yeah, but you can't really, and you're not this, and taking you back to all those old stories. So um, this is a lovely practice you can do every day. 
that will help to clear your energy field, keep it flowing so that when all these new versions of yourself is coming up to the surface and you're learning new things about yourself, you can really um, kind of knock that little gremlin off your shoulder. So let us enter in. We've got loads of people off tonight with poorly viruses and nasty things. I don't know if anybody else has had it. That 100-day cough or something, it's like... It's been a really nasty virus. So many people have had it, but I always think of viruses like a bit of a reset. They're like a reset, complete reset on your system. So as much as they're horrible, I always think they're quite, you know, you kind of come out the other end of that feeling a lot better usually and quite grateful for your health as well. <laughs> so let us join um, and open our circle. And uh, like I said, if you've got some cacao, we'll bring that in as well. And if you have got a candle, we might light a little candle for ourselves. So you might like to just start to just work to bring your, um, just to create a little sacred space for yourself. And I quite like to do that by lighting a candle. And um, I've worked, I've brought in, um, I don't know if you have this and if you don't, it doesn't matter, but any of the pine kind of oils, um, even eucalyptus would work. But I love these pine oils, especially if you're going through times of transition, because they're such great oils to really clear your impression of you feel. So if, you, if you're feeling a bit stagnant or, um, you know, your energy is feeling a bit dank. I don't use that word dank. I don't know if it's even a word. But anyway, it feels like it's it's resonant at the moment. So just taking that through through your field, just clearing off any of the shittiness silliness from your day <laughs> let's give it all a good a good clear off and then we'll just begin by bringing our palms down on our knees so this is going to be the first part of a little grounding exercise but i just want to um just to bring us in first of all so if you've got your cacao or um you know just a drink is is perfect but i just like us just to drop in with a little intention and then we can we can do our cacao blessing and invite our cacao to also guide us with our with our intentions so i'm just going to um pin because i'm i'm recording this um to send out so i don't want everybody to be on there just for privacy so i'm gonna just put my that's it and then it's on him it's on my mug on the, on the screen all right so palms down on your knees and then you can just close down your eyes for a moment let's just take a few breaths for ourselves and allow us to really drop into our into our little little coven <laughs> little, little circle of gorgeous women so just allowing your weight down. And again, just gently closing your eyes. And as we open up our space this evening, we're a little bit later than usual because I normally do these before the full moon, but because I've been away, this we're after the full moon. So we're not quite in full moon energy at the moment. We're actually going into waning moon. And but that's that's totally okay. But as we draw, draw our awareness in and down, I just wanted to feel with each breath that your energy is just beginning to ground itself. So just following the breath in, following the breath out, and just allowing your energy to find its own way down. So we're just following the energy down. And then as we all arrive here together, I'm going to just imagine that you've got roots moving down through the earth beneath you, wherever that is. And if you're on higher stories up, just sending your roots down. And imagine that all our roots are moving down into the core of the earth and they meet there together. So we all come together, even though we're in our individual spaces, our energy travels miles and miles and miles. So we can all be here in the same energy together. So as our roots arrive together, you may imagine the core of the earth like a red crystal, or you might have another um, awareness of the earth's core. 
But just imagine that all of our roots come together in all of the individual spaces that we're in. And we all arrive together here as one. So again, just allowing our all of our energies to come together. And I'll open up our space with a woman's blessing. To the women who held us our whole lives, we give great thanks. To the women around us who dance with us, sing with us, and impart their love and wisdom to us on a daily basis, we give great thanks. To the wise women of our futures, the ones who aren't yet born, the ones who are still so young but will teach us the most, and our beautiful sisters in our circle. We give great thanks. Our circle is now open. So if you have got some ceremonial cacao with you, if you want to bring your cacao in just in line with your heart, so just bring it into the heart field. And I think that... Um, the journey of um, of growth, really, and kind of spiritual exploration is really all about getting to know ourselves better, knowing ourselves better, accepting ourselves more, and being more of who we are. So I think it's a lovely journey. It's not always easy at times, but it is a lovely journey to really find ourselves. And it's not really that we are kind of having to learn new things more that it's just a remembering of a really remembrance of who we are at our core so full moon's always associated with um illumination reflection so i just wanted to have an awareness just as we set our intentions of like what is what has been illuminated for you just recently like what are the um, themes that might be running through your life at the moment so what things are you know what um things are really lighting you up what is challenging and just being aware of that as we set our intentions so i'd like you just to bring to the forefront of your mind a lovely quality so a quality that would really help you in your life at the moment, and that could be the quality of trust, it might be the quality of patience, it might be the quality of acceptance, of love. So just a lovely quality that you'd like to take forward with you into the session tonight. And just set a little intention or a big intention for yourself as we set our lovely intentions together for ourselves, but also this is not only like it's an energy. When we set an intention, it's an energy. And it's not only for ourselves, but it, it goes further than that because when we change ourselves, it has a ripple effect on all of the people that we come into contact with as well. So it has this, this lovely effect. So anything good is always going to recognize good. And I love that, that, um, you know, we, we, we make that for everybody else as well. So as we share a lovely uh, blessing with our sacred plant medicine cacao, just holding that intention, that quality in your heart. We give thanks to this plant medicine for the space she holds us in, to the wild feminine and to the spirit of cacao. We honour those past, present and future and make it possible to bring the lineage of this plant medicine to us today. The names we will never know and the faces we will never see. We are grateful that we are able to drink because of you. As we set our joint intentions today, we invite the spirit of cacao into our hearts. We thank everyone here who sits in circle and those who are not present. May every moment bless you deeply. We drink with you. May we rise in love together. Uh -huh. So with your first sip, you might like to welcome the spirit of this beautiful being.
And with your second sip, feeling the warmth and love from this beautiful teacher plant. And with your third sip, and as you finish your cup, just having a few, just a couple of moments, just in quiet contemplation of, again, what this moon and what this time has been illuminating for you at this point at this present moment. So we're moving into a lovely new energy of spring, which is just starting to, to come. So we're just starting to feel, you might be starting to feel this new pull. I'm finding like a pull to be outside at the moment. Um, so as you finish, just feel into what is like, what is present for you just now. And you might like to reflect back from when we were together in January. And again, what has changed since then? You might have set some intentions then. And how have you progressed in those intentions? And you might have a few dreams and aspirations for the next four week spin of the wheel. So just taking your time, but whenever you're ready, we're going to go through um, the grounding practice that we're going to use in the morning. So you can use this every morning. And then when we finish the clearing sequence, I'll show you the grounding practice that you can use at night. So they're just two a little bit different, fairly similar, but just slightly different. <laughs> So, again, just having a couple of moments with you, Kika. We're going to do um, some journaling afterwards. And then I'll talk a little bit about the, um, um, the congruence kind of theme that we've got for tonight. So is everybody ready? I can't really see how far on everybody is. Are you all are you all done your cacao? Great. So we're going to start off just you can do this standing, and I'm going to show you it standing um when we finish um the, the standing practice. Um, but I, I've been doing this sitting just in the morning before I do anything. Well, like once I've had my cacao, I've just been doing this to just settle and ground my energy. So you're going to start to start rubbing your hands together a little bit. This just gets your energy a little bit activated. And we're going to start off by placing your palms on your thighs. This is like one of the most grounding mudras you can do. Palms down, like easy as that, just palms down on your thighs. It's so grounding. And then from there, we're going to extend up through your spine. And then you're just going to close your eyes. So we're just going to take our... our um, Awareness inward and begin to gently ground your energy. So you are in command of your energy at all times. You are the only one who commands your energy. So when you want to ground, you tell your energy to ground and it will. So it will follow your instruction. So just taking a couple of moments with the eyes shut. We've, we've already sent our grounding roots down. So I just want you to just feel into now grounding your energy. And again, in any way that that feels uh, good for you. So it wants to be resonant with you. That you begin to send your energy down and you begin to ground it. And it usually only takes just a few breaths to begin to feel the static of your energy 
beginning to ground itself and your mind might start just to quieten down a little bit. So all the busyness of the day might just start to settle down a little bit. And then from here, we're going to relax the body now. So I'm just going to start off from your head and your face. So just bring your awareness around your eyes and your jaw. And just notice if there's any tension hanging around there. Take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, just let any tension melt away from your face. And allow your shoulders to release a little bit further away from your ears. And let your hands rest a little heavier onto your thighs. And then taking a nice deep breath in. And as you breathe out, just imagine all the muscles through the back of your body just relaxing a little bit more. Your chest relaxing and your belly relaxing. And any tension around your diaphragm and your rib cage, just allowing that to relax too. And your hips, pelvic bowl relaxing, any tension around the pelvic floor relaxing. Thighs, knees, lower legs, ankles, feet, toes relaxing. Just taking a few breaths and just noticing how it feels to be in a relaxed body, grounded and relaxed. Just taking a few breaths there. And now we're going to center our energy. So we're going to clasp the ends of your fingers together, just making like a little cut. Um, position of your hands and we're just going to let your hands rest over your lower belly so just connecting in with the tanden the dantian the cosmic womb the womb space sacral chakra so whatever that space that area resonates for you so as you breathe now we're just going to begin to center our energy so we begin to center down into the womb space and with your breath just beginning to breathe and just really build energy down into the lower belly so once you are grounded and centered Your energy begins to grow and build, and become more powerful. So that we begin to really tune into this low vibrational frequency of earth, centered in our body, centered into our creative center. into our feminine center, the sacred home of I. Then once you feel that your energy is nicely centered, we're then going to bring our hands into prayer position, into Anjali Mudra at the heart. And this is like, um, it's like an energy seal, but also Anjali Mudra balances the right left hemispheres of the brain, the masculine feminine energies within our body. 
And it's a lovely mudra, I feel, of grace. It's a lovely mudra to really feel into this sense of grace and gratitude. Okay, and just allowing that mudra to bring you to a state of balance. And again, we'll just have a few breaths. And then we're going to cross over the hands. We're going to take your right hand onto your left shoulder, your left hand onto your right shoulder. And you can have the hands kind of close-ish to your neck so they come, they, it, it feels really comforting, this I find when I do this in my practice. So again, just breathe in, allowing your energy to balance. Again, this is a... Um, balancing the masculine and feminine energies within us but I always feel like it's like my future self just placing a hand on my shoulders and just telling me that it's all okay and again we'll just take a few breaths there and I'm going to slide the bottom hand out and then take the bottom hand over the top hand And again, just taking a few breaths there with that feeling of being held. Okay, and then bring the hands back into prayer position to complete. Again, just coming back to that lovely central position, grounded and centered. And then from this place, I just want you to take a little journey into your heart cave. So you might like to imagine this space in the center of your chest like a beautiful crystal chamber. With jewels and crystals and you can have whatever you like in that little temple of your heart. Just imagine what might be there. You might have dip pools and roses and petals and maybe there might be animals in there. But as you enter in, just taking a seat into the center of your heart. And I want you just to connect for a moment with the woman or the girl that you used to be before other, others told you what you should be. Or maybe who you had to become to fit into the tribe. So we're going to explore our soul essence in our session tonight. And it's just like, um, it's like a session of alignment, really. We have lots of different aspects of ourselves. But we might just find a new one today that resonates. So from that really heart-centered place, you can just take a few breaths and let your awareness bubble gently to the surface. As we come back into our space, how's everyone feeling? Does that feel nice? It's a lovely little sequence. Yeah, and it's real easy to do. So, yeah, good. All right, so, Eat, Pray, Love. So, <laughs> I was listening to Eat, Pray, Love the other day, and um, 
I've watched the film before, but I've never listened to it on on Audible. So there was a little part in it, and you might remember if you've if you've read it, where um, Lizzie's friend tells her that the city of I think it was Rome has like every city has a name, and I think Rome's name was Sex. If I'm right, I think that's that's what I have right, and everything is about that. And everybody who comes here is looking for that. And everybody who is there is, it's all about that. And so she was talking about also like um, words because she was learning Italian and words that resonated with like who she was and what her, her like soul essence was. And a little while ago um, when I was working with divine masculine energy, so I was, um, activating divine masculine energy within me because I had always struggled with it and really struggled with this um what what divine masculine is which is structure so I've always worked very much in divine feminine energy where I'm very creative and I can do and I can you know create all the time but that divine feminine if it's if it's not if it's not structured it, it will burn out quite easily so I was kind of making friends with this divine masculine energy and uh, just happened to start watching, we would started to watch um, Vikings and I'd really got into it and I'd never really done a lot at school because I, I, I hated school, did not really, like, literally it was like, yeah, we, we just got attacked pretty much every day at school by our teachers. I don't know if anyone else had that experience at school, but our, our school was like, it was like Boston. <laughs> so, so I hated school. And um, and I never really took a lot of notice of history. And I didn't really even resonate that, like, you know, I live on the outskirts of York. And, like, it was, like, such of a strong part of, the, like, the Viking story. And then as I started to watch this and really, I've never even been to Viking Centre in all my life. So went to Viking Centre and just really started resonating with this lovely Viking energy. So I could allow, and then actually when I started looking at all the men and like the choices in men, they've all got this like, they all have this like Viking vibe about them. And um, so I kind of got to this place where I thought, well, actually we, we did a journey with the Divine Masculine and I could, kind of accept divine masculine as this viking energy so that was the start of this sort of journey and then i started to resonate with um this bohemian energy because i quite like the idea of this wild bohemian energy i thought we yeah, all really resonate with this and it's like all about the waxing moon and it was when i was born and it kind of this all started to drop in as well and then just recently, I don't know if you've got it, but I've been working with the Sacred Rebel deck by, um, I can't remember her name. It's gone out of my head. Um, but the, this card kept coming up and it was talking about a fringe dweller. And I really love this because I love this gypsy feeling, you know, this free spirited feeling. And, and I've always been that way. And um and this fringe dweller name came up, a word came up, and I thought, actually, I think I really resonate with that within myself. I think I'm a fringe dwelling um, bohemian Viking. <laughs> I started resonating with these words. And I just, and I, the more I've been resonating with these words, it's like as if all my energy is sort of coming into this sort of congruence of like, this is. This is who I am. This is who I've always wanted to be. But I always tried to be like my mum, who was a perfectionist and who was like, you know, she was like, oh, I used to drive her insane because I was so untidy and, you know, all this stuff. So, yeah, so that that's like the story around that. But so I thought it might be a nice thing to have a little look at a few words and things and see, you know, if there's anywhere that we resonate with because I think for everything I mean even if it's in our work in our like our home environment like when I started working with bohemian energy like I wanted to change my like my house I started to bohemianize my house and then that helped me that every day when I come out and into a room I feel this vibe of it all coming through my house and then I'll say El Alana Fairchild thank you Juliet and then um yeah, had to complete clear out of my wardrobe and then started to, you know, like 
re you know when i make purchases like do they feel in alignment with the viking bohemian fringe dweller <laughs> so so um and I think as we're getting, you know, we're maybe going into menopause, you might already be there, you might not be there yet, but you might be going through these transitional times in your life. We're changing, like we're, you know, we're changing all the time. And really, we don't want to stay the same as we've always been. So, you know, it's like, can we resonate more and more with that, you know, that that wild woman within us that actually as we become older I think we have more confidence to rock it really and, and be more of that anyway as we're getting a bit older um so yeah so I thought we'd have a little play with this and um you might already like really resonate with a word but often these words um often come from who we were when we were little like who you know like what did we love to do like I just love to be outside I always was climbing trees and you know I just love to be outside like where I live now is like on the outskirts of of York so when I luckily for me I already live in a town that is pretty much aligned with my soul essence so kind of look at then we can look at kind of like where we live and you know like one of the girls at the weekend so we did this in the um yoga training at the weekend one of the girls at the weekend said like I really resonate with being like a mermaid but she didn't live near the sea and then this morning she's like a house is uh, like I had this house had come up and she said like it's it's really it's by the sea and and they've accepted my offer on it so it was like as if she aligned at the weekend with this mermaid energy and then the universe met her there with this like this house that was near the sea so it was just so lovely how that worked so yes yeah, so I thought we'd, we'd play with a few words and like you might have a word anyway and you might completely know who you are, but then again, you might want to change. You know, you might want to move a little bit closer. You might have retired from your job. I think Karen has retired from the job. So, she, you know, that this like life is going to bring us changes all the time. So we are given an opportunity to expand really into more of who we are, because, you know, if we've left a job or a relationship where we've had to be a certain person, you know, to fit into that role, then you know, we can become a bit more of who we are or who we've always wanted to be during this transition. So you might want to chuck a few words in the group chat if you want, but I'm guessing that everybody that's here is resonating with a wild woman. Am I right? A bit of a rebel. <laughs> yeah, good, 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 good. So... The concept of wild woman often evokes qualities of independence, strength, authenticity, and connection to nature. Now, one of my big passions is is really a, is really about connecting to the to you know to nature to really coming back to the simplicity of nature and how nature guides us the moon the earth the seasons the cycles and getting back in tune because I really believe that this is the way forward if we're not doing it already I feel it is really a way forward that we want to be really getting into into tune with all of this so the archetype of, the archetype of wild woman is this woman it's not like um wild crazy in fact actually when i googled wild woman today it was like all bad woman and you know and, and all like there was loads of right really negative stuff around wild world which i thought was quite interesting um because what was actually coming quite a lot through for me today and actually i had an akashic reading just recent and within my Akashic region, it was all about this healing the sister wound. And this was like really deep um, ancestral uh, like work, you know, some something to do that is for me to complete in this lifetime is to be part of that. And I think that, um, you know, the more that we can like, like it's time for us all to be able to step up now and be more of that because we don't have to hide anymore and it's you know we're, we're safe to be together again and you know we're not going to get not in this country hopefully you know drowned for being 
you know, being healers or witches or whatever we want to resonate with. So I'm going to just throw out a few words that you might resonate with. You might have a few. But we came up with a few at the weekend um, that people really resonated with. And you can have more than one. And actually what I found is when you unlock one, you tend to unlock a few more that might then also, you might think, oh, yeah, actually, I quite like that word. I, I would like to just explore that word a little bit. So free spirit, bohemian, which I love anyway. This is one of mine that I love. That very much associated with water element, wild bohemian, Viking energy, fringe dwelling, wildling, gypsy, courageous, authentic, strong, intuitive, sensual, empowered, creative, connected, nature spirit, spirited, willful, you might have been called that when you were young, embrace it. <laughs> willful is a good thing, not a bad thing. The willful, willful child is such a willful child. Healer, mermaid, midwife, independent, goddess, priestess, mother, nature lover, moon lover, in rhythm, dancer, water lover, centered, divine feminine, musician, playful, joyful. So has anybody got any more lovely words that might resonate with this wild spirit or anything that you might um that you might like to share at all. So just having a little play with these. Compassionate, yeah, for sure. Heart-centered, heart-led. I love that as well, heart-led. Um, so what I want you to do, you might already have a word there. It's just to connect with a fresh energy. So you might already... Um, resonate with an archetype but it'd be lovely to add in some new fresh energy because I feel as if we've been through like a really big shift in energy yeah feel us like that nice so we've been through quite a big shift in energy just recently and I feel as if we're in a fresh new vibe now we're, we're in fresh new energy a raggle taggle gypsy I love that yeah raggle taggle gypsy i remember that i actually i don't know if anybody remembers kizzy i actually found that, that if they have actually got the little television series on um youtube i don't know if you've seen it but i loved kizzy all i ever wanted to do was to live in a caravan and i swear to god i'm gonna do it before i die i'm gonna live in a caravan <laughs> i just i love caravans um, and I love that feeling of that, you know, that connection to that gypsy. And I think actually through my lineage, um, you know, there has been like my grandma said there was like a Romany kind of, you know, that sort of vibe within it. And I love that. I love that energy. So when we when we connect to a, an essence, like an essence that feels really congruent in our in our field, mindfully rebellious nice yeah lovely Re rebel how did i say rebel sacred rebel that must come in there as well help with the word something to do with watching everything around quietly and making connections between things watching watching observer <laughs> um i don't know somebody might else might come up with something for that present yeah i love that So when we get a once we get a, a word companion to and through the veil, I like that. 
what about like nature actually rihanna you your energy reminds me like of a nature nymph is it a nymph not not like a sex nymph well maybe <laughs> is it a wood nymph or something you remind that's what you remind me of anyway um so once we've got our word or something that we kind of start to resonate with, you're just starting to um, kind of activate that energy within you. So you just start to like meet it and invite it in. Then we we can then look at the places where we live, um, where we work, like the work that we do, our hobbies, Maybe the books that we read. I've just got a really good book, actually. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm, I'll share it in the group anyway. Um, that I think you'll you'll probably quite like as well. What we wear as well. So is you know are our, what we're wearing um, expressing like like who we are? Does it help us to be more congruent in who we are? Our home and surroundings. So again, looking at our home, does that you know reflect? So of course, everything is a mirror. Everything is a reflection of who we are. So our home and where we live. Wild, wandering, wandering woman. I like that, Juliet. Gorgeous. The people that we spend time with as well. Do they, you know, do they support and do we feel comfortable to be our advocate yeah like that do we feel comfortable to be our natural self so I want you to feel into the word natural as well because I think this is a really lovely word to resonate with what is natural for me because I think we've lived a lot um you know for many of us especially if we if we've got you know, the energy of the witch where we've maybe hidden a lot and we've had to be not quite, you know, not quite congruent with who we are because of what other people might think. So, yeah, witch is a word. If you want to resonate with witch, then yes, do that as well. Um, so the people that were around, um, the people we spend time with, relationships. So on all those different levels, how congruent, can we be in those different environments? So this is obviously it's not going to be something we're going to do right now, but you can just take this in through the next month to have a little look. As we're moving into March on Friday, can you even believe that? Like we're going into spring, like full spring already. Um, you might want to look like at your wardrobes and um, you know, is there old stuff that you're hanging on to that, like, is not in congruence with who you are? It might be stuff in your house. There might be stuff in your wardrobe. Like, you, even you, if, you, if, you know, if you wear makeup, like, in your makeup bag, in your jewellery, like, all that stuff. Like, you know, um, I think it's really great to have a really good clear out um, because when we clear out, we just make space for that new energy to come in because we're always becoming, we're always becoming the next version of ourselves. And we're always, you know, coming back to remembering who we are. And, you know, we might remember that actually when we were little, we maybe loved to do this or we love to do that. And this, you know, this can all really come back to us as we, you know, as we get in, um, in more congruence with actually who we are. So if you have a feel into also, and again, you might have a bit more time um, over the next month or so to just have a little feel into like, like coherence and harmony. So as we start to really resonate with these, like these words, these essences that are in, that are in, in congruence with our soul, like, the, I love this feeling of coherence. So are we coherent with these, you know, with with these energies? Do do we feel, you know, so again, I think we're moving into more of a feeling time. So do we feel out of alignment when we're in certain, you know, in certain places with certain people? Does that feel, you know, do we feel resonant with that and in harmony with that as well? So if we are living 
a congruent life, what we feel is in alignment in many ways, you might also be aware of dissonance as well with that. So have a feeling into what areas, aspects, and we can't like like we can't do everything all at once. So you know it's it's good just to be kind to yourself, um, and you know make little little changes. Small changes are always going to be best for the nervous system. So just small changes, but being really aware of the areas where there may, might be a few little like little areas of dissonance, where there might be a few changes that we can make. Because if we think into like the archetype that we're connecting to, if we were living in perfect alignment with the archetype, how connected are we to it in this moment? And if we were living completely aligned where would we be living if there were no limitations where would we be living what would what would we be doing like for our work or um you know we might be in retirement but we might want to write books or you know create art or you know there might be all of these these you know very different creative energies like what would we love to wear like what clothes do we love what food do we love what would our day look like what would our routines look like what is the energy signature that we are carrying so we can walk into a room or a shop or a party or whatever and people know who you are just because they can just feel the the energy of you so they know who you are already like in every every way that you show up you are in congruence you're in alignment with who you are and you you know your your energy speaks for you straight out you know people know who you are just from your energy does that make sense or is it completely as clear as mud <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it makes sense it's just been something that's really resonated with me i thought i'd just share it with you because it was really nice so i've got loads of there's absolutely loads of journal prompts here which i'll put into the group um as well and then you can you can work with these these clearing practices as well so there might be a couple of changes that you want to make. So you might actually resonate straight off and go, yeah, I definitely need to just shift that a little bit. I definitely need to have a bit of a clear out. So I'd just like you just to write down a couple of little action steps that you can maybe make in the next, um, in the next moon, you know, the next moon cycle um, to bring you into more congruence with the wonderful gorgeous amazing wild woman that you are <laughs> and then if you want to type those little commitments into the group that'd be great as well I love that word wandering, Julia. It's calling me in. I'm going to add it to my little list, wandering. Actually, that was another thing as well. If you, um, I don't know if any of you have had your numbers um, 
your like soul numbers done they're really really interesting as well so my hidden number was a was a number five and number five is the number of freedom and um, I can really recommend Samantha Sutherland just let me put it on here she's really great to do your soul numbers um she does a fabulous uh, report for the year um so each month is governed by a number, but she does all of you like your life path reading as well, which is really interesting. And so with your hidden number, our oh, nice Rhiannon, yeah, lovely. Spending more time connecting to the authentic essence of me and then clearing out my wardrobe and my books. Brilliant. Yeah, good. Um, what was I saying then? Oh, yeah, so number five. So if you've got a number five as a hidden number, Number five needs is the five is the number of freedom. So if you're living your life in a way, like for example, with the number five is a hidden number, and you're not getting away away from like and not making space for yourself, you're going to feel really trapped and overwhelmed. Um, so I found that found that really helpful to know, so I can book time away. Clear clutter. Oh God, everyone's clearing out. <laughs> Clear clutter. Thin out clothes and books, start therapy work. You're brilliant. Clear out what I don't now connect with, anything that has a sense of should around it, lovely, like, like, like. Anything that has a sense of should around it, anything that feels old, heavy or boring, and yes, 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 love it. Only doing what makes me happy, brilliant. After I've cleared out cupboards and wardrobes and drawers, clearing clutter, fantastic, willful seeker. Love that, Leslie. Get rest of work clothes on vintage, yes, clothes that align with me. Embrace natural shampoo and conditioner. Yeah, love that, love that, love that. Finding kind, gen genuine ways to connect with others. Yeah, Maggie, love that too. So yeah, so if that, because um, that's that's actually been been uh, quite a big thing that I've I've been doing myself as well is um like also like looking at so if you know natural is a word that you're connecting with then you know looking at um be more mindful of the energy exchange with my money brilliant yeah releasing lovely i might do one on money next time actually maybe we'll have a look at that the energy of money is always interesting to work with isn't it so i might do that next time uh, creative arty and experiment and again yeah lovely relax so what I want to say also is and I've just lost my train of thought I forgot what I was saying oh yeah that was it about being that I've been natural so yeah looking at like the chemicals in your house I think that's a really good thing to do as well um you know look at um slightly more maybe more kind of like less you know just less chemical really I think on on many levels is is always a good thing to do um yeah endocrine disruptors and um you know organic I'm actually going to do grow my own this year we'll see how that goes again usually I get them all going and they just die because I forget to water them I don't know if anyone else does that but I, I do it every year <laughs> this year I'm like I'm not doing it this year I'm definitely going to water my plants creative output keeping energy moving yeah that's lovely keeping the energy moving so brilliant so some great um enjoy my lovely garden yeah that's exactly what I'm going to do too Claire that's my um next project is to get out in the garden and get some get my my plant um my um beds kind of planted up for for food <laughs> hopefully this year all right great so we're going to go into I'm just going to show you this little practice which is um an energy cultivation practice and then I'll show you the night time the closing down practice so the other thing what I was going to go on to um that I've just we've just been sharing in yoga training this weekend is about relaxation so how many of us do a daily relaxation practice yeah yeah fantastic good 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 so relaxation is so key for your energy grounding and relaxation and um, for me the most important most important things that we can do for ourselves to keep our energy good and um yeah keep us motivated and keep us moving forward so 
Um, if you don't have a relaxation practice tomorrow, I think if I get a chance, I'm going to do, I have actually, I think I have got a relaxation. I'm going to put a relaxation in the group and um, I will challenge you to do a daily relaxation if you're not doing one already. Let's have a challenge for the month um, to get a 20 minute relaxation in every day. In, in, in the afternoon is good between two and six in the energies of vata which is air element movement fuzzy energy in the afternoon it's a really good time to do a relaxation because it, it helps to counterbalance the like the busyness of air element so that's quite a nice time to do it all right good 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 so do you need does anyone need a pee any muggle does anyone need a muggle pee if you do, this is a good chance to get a muggle pee if your little human needs a wee. Um, and then because we're going to do a little bit of movement. So if you can find a little space. Oh, I love you, doggy. Nice. Um, if you can find a space in your room, just you don't need loads of room for this. I'm going to put a little bit of music on. So we're just going to get... A little bit of energy moving first. And just check, is that, can you hear that? Is that really loud? Can you hear me still? Can you hear me still? Yeah, good. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to just do this standing. Oh, I put that one on, on, on. Is that really loud? Is that okay? Music, can't hear the music. Can you hear that? No. Can you hear that? Yes, can you hear it? Is it too loud? Is it okay? It's really quiet? Is it really quiet? Yeah, really quiet. <laughs> I just don't know bit. I've been filming this afternoon and uh, it. How's that? Is that okay? It'll do. No, too, not loud enough. I'm going to put it up louder. Is that really loud? Can you hear it? Yeah? I'll just hear it now. All right, good. So we're going to come up onto our mat. If you've got a mat, we'd have to be on a mat actually. You can do it on the floor. So just have your feet a bit wider and hip width apart. I'm just going to set a little wiggle. So I just want you to wiggle your body a bit. So just going to release any tension from your day, any silliness from the day. I don't know where I picked that up, but I like that feeling that we'll just shake off any silliness from the day. And then just bouncing into your knees. So you just start to create a nice little shake. So just shaking through the body. And then maybe just start off a little bit of movement through the shoulders. So just bring the elbows up around, back and down. So nice little movement to release off the spine. Hopefully that feels nice. Good. Then we're going to take that into a twist. So just twist the spine. So just gentle twist. This is always lovely. I think to decompress the spine at night. You can also do this in the morning to get you going. Keeping the knees nice and soft. You can lift up onto the, the heel of the back foot. And just twist a little bit deeper. And we'll just put a bit more energy into that. Your arms be relaxed. Gorgeous. And then come back to centre. Just give it everything a nice little wiggle. I'm going to take a nice deep breath in to take the arms overhead and then release out breath as you come down. And in breath. In breath. So just releasing any old versions of yourself through the breath.
Good. Keep your knees nice and soft. Look after the body. Feel good, then don't do it. Great. Last time. And then reach the arms overhead. Spread your fingers really wide. Take a nice deep breath in. And then as you breathe out, release the hands down. Good. And then give everything a nice little shake. Ow, how's that feeling? Does anyone need a pee break? You all all right? All right, so we're gonna bring the feet hip width apart. And again, just soften from your knees. We're coming into a nice upright mountain pose. So just finding your feet into a nice centered place. So your feet are nicely grounded. Now lift up through the shoulders, sternum lifts. And just find a nice natural place for your pelvis to sit. So your pelvis just rocks a little bit back and forth, but just find its own natural center. And then we're just gonna rock a little bit back and forwards, so just towards the heels and then towards the toes. There you go. Then we're gonna circle around the feet. Again, this is really grounding for your energy and good for your feet too. We've got loads of reflex points on the feet. And then in the opposite direction. Very good. And then again, just let yourself come back into the center. Give yourself a little bit of a shake. Again, just feeling that real lovely feeling of being grounded through your feet. I'm going to bring the right arm over your head, left hand just below your navel. I'm going to take a nice deep breath in to stretch up through the crown of your head. And then out, as you breathe out, coming into a lovely side bend. In breath as the arms come circle in front. And then again, out breath as you reach. In breath center. And out breath, side bend. Lovely, just releasing any old stagnant energy from the rib cage. Waist. Really balancing also for the sacral energy as well. Lovely last time. And then again, just going to come back to center. If you feel you need a little clearing, extra clearing, you can breathe in and release out, it's a nice little light movement. So the next movement, you're gonna swing the arms overhead, you're gonna make a fist and pull in, so the elbows come into your sides. So this is like calling your energy back. So if you've been giving out a lot, we're gonna call it back. So you're gonna breathe in, and you can breathe out with a, as you bring the elbows in, good, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out. So just really building energy in the solar plexus chakra and a fire energy. Breathe in, breathe out. So just really calling your energy back. Breathe in. Good, one more. Breathe in. And then turn the palm. So just ground that energy down and in. And then we're going to move into arm rotation. So the hands turn so that a um, little finger comes to the front. And as the little finger comes to the front, the shoulders come back and the chest lifts. And then as the little finger comes around and we're going to turn the hands in the opposite direction, the upper back kind of rounds over. So it's like a closing at the front, opening at the back, and then opening at the front and closing at the back. Good. So we're going to take a nice deep breath in there and then out breath and in breath. So the arms are going to slowly rotate up to shoulder height and just working with the breath. So breath in and breath out. Breath in, breath out, good. And the arms are going to slowly come back down to your sides. This is lovely movement for the heart chakra. 
and just to release the energy around the heart. Give it a nice, good shake out. And then we're going to move into throat chakra. So we're going to bring the chin in towards your chest and the head gently lifts. Drop the head back a little bit, not too far back, but just to open up the throat with an in-breath. And then out breath as the chin comes down and in breath as the head lifts back, just working to loosen and release the throat chakra. Breathe in and breathe out, lovely. And the head comes back to centre, we're going to take an in breath. And as you breathe out, we're going to turn to look towards your right side, keep the body centred. In breath centre and then out breath left. Breath centre, out breath to the right, breath centre, and left. Coming back to centre again, just give yourself a little bit of a shake out. Going to bring the arms circle in front. The legs are going to, feet, sorry, going to step out a little bit wider. We're going to move into a twist. Now take an in breath, and as you breathe out, going to twist. If the back heel, we're going to take one hand in the lower back and the other hand is just going to rest on the shoulder as you turn the head to look over the shoulder. So you get a lovely twist through the spine and then soft as you breathe in, bring the arms all the way around to the other side as you breathe out. So breathe in and breathe out. So breathe in, full twist for the spine, beautiful for integrating energy and also for energizing the spine. Breath in and breath out. So really starting to bring prana, lovely energy of love and light through the whole system with your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Beautiful center. Bring the feet again to hip width apart. And we're going to take the arms overhead with a lovely stretch. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, we're going to breathe out through the mouth, release really soft down to the ground. Breathe in as you draw the hands up the centre line. More breathing. And again. Keep breathing. Now as you take the arms overhead, just open up the hands into the chalice, the lovely chalice position. This is called the old gypsy way of calling the spirit. So as we hold the hands open in this way, we're inviting in all the very best, all the blessings, all of the wonderfulness that you deserve. You're going to just really welcome it in. Take a lovely deep breath. And then as you breathe out, we're going to just turn the hands down and just ground the energy. So bring it all the way down. Lovely. And then from here, we're going to go into our grounding practice. So the hands are going to rest on the thighs. And again, we're going to just drop into a nice mountain pose with the knees soft. And I just want you to gently close your eyes and tune into your breath. And we're just going to wait for a moment. And when your energy grounds, you'll get a little tug forwards. Now we're going to just let our body be tugged three times forward. So everybody's energy will take a different amount of time. But just having your eyes closed and you'll just feel a gentle pull as your energy gets pulled forward. So you get full pulled towards your toes. So you're just going to take three little pulses. And then once you feel that you've had that little pendulum pull, we're going to then clasp the hands together again. And 
Can you hear better now, Karen? I've got a mic on, I should be able to hear. Just turn this down. Is, is, can anyone hear? Can you not hear me very well? You can hear me, yeah? It might be your volume, Karen. Just check your volume. All right, so from here, we're going to clasp the fingers. Again, come into that Dantian point, the Tandem point, and just cup the hands so they're about an inch away from your belly. And again, we're centering the energy. And then we're going to scan the hands up the front of the body. So just scan them all the way up. And then we're going to rest the hands on the chest, just on the heart. Now again, just going to take a moment with your eyes closed. And just wait for that little pulse of energy. So you're going to pull you forwards. Feel that little tug forward. And bring your hands into prayer. And again, you're just going to wait for that little pull, that little tug of your energy grounds. A little pull forwards. going to cross over again so one um, arm it doesn't matter which one you can do either way and again just bring the hands on the shoulders opposite again just wait for that little pull forward And then once you've had that little tug, you're going to change the cross of the arms. Then just wait for that little tug forward. Okay, and I'm going to finish with the hands in prayer position at the heart. And I'm just going to wait for that little pull, that little pull forward. And just let everything release. Give everything a good old shake out. And then we're going to come into a lovely relaxation with a full release. I'm just checking in. If everybody, can everybody hear me all right? Just check in. All right, can I just check? It was just the music at the beginning I couldn't hear. Oh, okay, it wasn't me. Because I was going to say, because this mic's really quite loud, actually, I find, anyway. All right, lovely. So you can lie down. <laughs> if you want to lie down, we're going to just have a little um, release meditation. So if you've got anything that you want to let go of, this is going to be a good time. So just find yourself into a nice, comfortable position. Um, you can lie down on your back, on your belly, or you can sit. So anywhere that feels good for you. And just taking a few breaths. Oh, perfect. All right, just take a few breaths, close your eyes. 
And I just want you to greet this new version of yourself. So we're always changing, always growing. And this is great, so good. What a lovely, lovely thing that we have, this opportunity to come together and yeah, become better versions of ourselves. So just having a few moments to allow yourselves to really ground in. And hopefully your energy does feel quite grounded now. We've done a couple of groundings. And as you let yourself feel into the earth beneath you, uh, whatever that is for you, whether it is a chair, whether it's the floor. And really feel into this sense that the earth will never drop you. She will never let you down. So we can just allow our weight down into her. Mother Nature will never guide us wrong. So if you follow her nudgings and her inspiration, we can live fuller, more beautiful lives, more simple lives, more natural lives. So as you take a few more deep breaths, maybe in your mind's eye, you can just take yourself off to a place in nature where you feel comfortable, you feel supported, somewhere that you love. And imagine yourself at the edge of water. So you're surrounded by the pure radiant light of the moon and it feels amazing. Moonlight is reflecting on the water, offering her beautiful grandmother wisdom. So just allowing yourself to really bathe in your own essence, your soul essence, all that you are. And in this moment, I want you just to really own it, really own all that you are, love all that you are, accept all that you are and allow a deeper sense of yourself to arise to the surface. And as you picture this scene, just imagine that you also have a basket of flower petals with you. And each flower petal represents something that you are releasing, something that is no longer serving you, something that is no longer in congruence with the woman that you are becoming. So as you synchronize with the energy of the moon and lovingly beginning to let go of that which no longer empowers and nourishes you. Moving closer to the edge of the water, feeling the coolness of the silver moon beaming down on you and the breath of fresh air dancing on your skin. Begin to drop flower petals into the water. Watch the gentle ripples that they create in the water ripples through your energy and ripples through your life. So each petal releasing anything that no longer serves, maybe fear and doubt, maybe anger, resentment, releasing judgment of yourself and others. Releasing anything that is not yours, that you've carried. Releasing 
limiting beliefs, things that hold you back in your life. Releasing more petals as you release any obstacles on your path. Any relationships that no longer serve your highest good. Releasing any feelings of unworthiness. Any attachment to outcomes. And as you keep releasing the petals, look at how beautifully the flower petals are floating away from you on the water surface. Ushering you into a new cycle, a new way of being, a new life with freedom to be you. Any struggles, any hardships, any disappointments and sadness, all ripples guiding you, strengthening you, and preparing you for this next version. For welcoming in clarity and strength, many blessings the moon offers. Trust in your intuition to guide you towards new relationships, new situations and energies that will serve your highest good. And set some lovely intentions for joy, for love, for ease, for peace, whatever your heart desires as if they are already here. Feel them as if they already exist. And just take a moment to offer a quiet prayer of gratitude. Know that your higher self, your greater self, and the energies of the moon are always here to guide you and lead you on your path. And taking three slow, deep breaths. And bringing the hands together, maybe getting a little bit of heat in the hands. And then gently placing your palms over your eyes. Just allow your eyes to rest into the warmth of your hands. And then use your fingertips to gently massage over your face. Around your eyes, your shoulders. And bring in your hands into prayer position at your heart. And just taking a moment to bow into yourself. May you lean into the changes and cycles that you have been called towards. May you find the courage to trust, to love and to accept yourself and shout yes to the burn of transformation. This is where you enter. This is where you stop resisting. This is where you shoot out of the cracks you've fallen into. This is where the waiting ends and a new you is born. There's no going back. May you lean in. May you lean in. Allowing a beautiful inner smile to rise from your heart to your face, to your beautiful eyes. And as you open your eyes into our lovely space. Our circle is now closed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So good to see everybody. Thank you for being here. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So I'm not sure when our next circle is. 
Um, oh, can see it. My. All right, so it is around about the end of March ish. I think it might be about the twenty seventh of March. The next one. Um. So yeah, we'll see you all really soon. Hope you can all make it. I'll send a recording of this. Um, and I'll also send with the email the um all of the journal prompts so you can like have a really good deep dive over the next month or so and um yeah lovely to see you rachel oh gorgeous energy tugs yeah i've done a little video of them as well so you can do them they are grounding your energy so so good if you suffer a little bit with overwhelm and you know all the mental energies at the moment are overwhelming then they're so great for you um you know just to really ground your energy so have a gorgeous month ahead and i will see you all really soon lots of love <laughs> bye bye oh gorgeous night night sleep well <laughs> bye